joined. This is Shalaya with Scott Leroy Marketing. And today we are going to be going over what to do before migrating to the new website platform. So in this class, we are going to be going over the things that you need to know before you launch your new command site. So this will be based more towards those of you who have not yet launched your new site. For those of you who have already launched your site, this class will be kind of preemptive. However, we will take a look at some aspects of the new command site after we go over how to preserve your legacy content. So keep in mind that once you do launch your new site, there is not an option to revert back to the original site. So a few things we will touch on today prior to launching is that you will no longer have access to your current landing pages to make any edits or changes to those. And any custom pages that you may have, you will want to go ahead and save those details as those, those are not going to transfer over. You do have the option now in the new sites to create new landing pages and new website pages. However, the legacy content will not carry over automatically. Those will need to be recreated on their own. So to get started, the first thing we want to start with is our marketing profile. The marketing profile is going to feed to the new website 100% meaning that you will no longer need to make manual edits when you are updating things like your headshot photo, your bio, or any other important information based on your profile. So we wanna make sure that our marketing profile is always fully up to date and in good standing at all times, just to make sure everything is current on our website. So to get to our marketing profile, we want to click on our name in the top right corner and then we're gonna go down to settings. Once we're in our settings here, we want to click on connect settings on the left-hand side. And then we will go into the marketing profile here. So once we are in the marketing profile, the first thing that I will make note of is in the top right, you're going to see this green toggle. So this is what brands your marketing to your website and other marketing materials. So if this was toggled off, your website and your marketing will not be branded to you. So always make sure that is toggled to green unless you are looking to hide your marketing. Next, we have our headshot photo here. So for your headshot photo, you do want to be sure that is cropped down to a square. If it is not, and it looks distorted in this circle, that is how it will show up on your marketing. So you do want to be sure it is showing up clearly here. If you do have any trouble uploading your headshot photo or making any adjustments, you can always send it over to us and we can get that adjusted for you. Next, we have our team logo. So if you are on a team, your team logo can go here. If you are not on a team, we do recommend having an image uploaded here just because some of the marketing materials automatically pull that logo in. So it will end up showing up as a broken link on your marketing. Next below that, we have our detailed information. So your name here, we do recommend using your name as it reflects on your license for compliance purposes. Your license number, if you are on a team, your team name can go here. Next, we have our job title. If you have a slogan that you use for your business, you can add a custom slogan here. And then below that, we have our designations. Under that, we have the ability to add in military affiliations. So if you are affiliated with the military, you can add that into your profile. You can click this drop down here to select your affiliation type. 
And then once you choose your affiliation, you will receive another drop down menu to select the branch that you are affiliated with. Once you choose those, be sure that you click on the add button all the way to the right here, as that is what will save it to your profile. Under that, we have our bio. So we don't have anything in this one at this moment. However, the way your bio looks in this text box is how it's going to show up on your marketing. So if you do have line breaks in between your paragraphs or anything like that, this is where you wanna make sure that is reflecting properly. Below that, we have our contact information. So your mobile phone number would go here, your office phone number here, and you also have the option to add a fax number if you would like. If you are in another country, you can change the country code by clicking the drop down here. Under that is where your business email will go, whether you use your KW email or a custom business email. And then your website URL will go next to that here. Under that, we have our market center details. So your market center logo will go here. So you'll see for the Market Center logo, it does look distorted here. Unlike the headshot photo, the logos will automatically correct themselves. So we don't need to worry about this one here. For the Market Center address and phone number, you do want to be sure this is always reflecting the correct information to follow compliance. So if by any chance you have transferred Market Centers or your Market Center has relocated, always be sure this is reflecting the correct information. Next below that, we have our compliance items. So if your office has any legal footer text that they require for compliance, you can add that in here. Now you'll see we have in this text box, each office is independently owned and operated. However, this is not required to be in here as this does automatically show up on your marketing already. So if you type this into your legal footer text, it will show up twice on your marketing. Below that, we have the option to add legal footer links. So some offices do have links that are required for compliance. For example, if you're a Texas agent, you need to add your links in for your commission information. And New York agents need your standard operating procedure links. So if you do need to add those in, you can simply click on the add link button. And then it will give you boxes to add in your link title and then the URL link to that link. If you need to delete these at any time, you can simply go over to the right and click on the red trash can icon to delete that from your profile. Below that, we have legal footer images. So these are very small. They are thumbnail size. You'll see in the description, they are 128 by 48 pixels. So not very big. So you probably don't wanna use this for any advertising or anything. However, you can add in additional credential logos or anything like that if you would like to. And then below that, we have our social media options. So here is where you can add your social media business pages if you would like. So you have the option for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you have a YouTube channel, as well as your LinkedIn profile. So any of those can be added in to add links to your website. And then down at the bottom, you will see an option for Google Analytics. However, this has now moved over to the new website platform. So this is irrelevant on the marketing profile at this time. So once you finish updating your profile, be sure that you click on the save button down at the bottom to save your changes. And that's going to refresh the page for us and let us know that our profile was successfully saved. So now that we've covered our marketing profile, we can go ahead and jump into how to preserve our landing pages and custom content from our legacy site. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into our consumer tab. So if you're still getting familiar with what these icons are on the left-hand side, 
you can click on the red KW block in the top left, and that will give you a description for each of these icons. So we're gonna go ahead and click into consumer. So now that we are in our consumer section, the first thing we are going to go over is preserving our landing pages. So we're gonna to go to the top of the page here and click over to landing pages. So before you save your landing pages, you do want to go ahead and disable or delete any landing pages that you no longer have a use for. So to do that, you can either click on the toggle on the left side under status to disable the page, or you can go all the way to the right side and click on the three dots. And then you have the option to either edit your page, change the URL to the page, remove your custom URL, deactivate the page, or completely delete the page. So you have many different options there if you're looking to do more than just disable the status here. Keep in mind that any compliance updates to landing pages will not be accessible once you launch your new site. So you do wanna make sure that you make any changes to these pages prior to switching over. So once you finish making any necessary updates to these pages, you can then go ahead and preserve those by copying them to a Google Doc or a Word Doc, whatever you prefer to use. So I already have a Google Doc open and another tab here. So I have simply named this website content just to keep everything in one place. So what we're gonna do is we are going to start at the top of the name here and click and drag to highlight all of this information. So that will allow you to copy all of your landing pages at once if you have multiple landing pages saved. So once we highlight our information, we can simply right click and then copy. And then we're gonna go into our Google Doc and we're gonna go ahead and right click and paste this into here. So by highlighting all of that information, that's going to paste in our landing page title as well as our landing page URL link. So as long as you have the live URL link to your landing page, you will still be able to view the page. You just will not be able to go in and make any changes to the page once you launch your new command site. So now that we have covered adding those to our Google Doc, we're gonna head back over to our consumer tab here. So now that we have gone through and saved our landing pages, we can jump right into saving our website content. So we're gonna first start with how to save our hero images. So if by chance you have uploaded any custom hero images to your current site, I'm gonna show you how to save those prior to switching over. So to find your hero images, you will go to the top right of your consumer page and click on site and app settings. Once this loads, right here on this first general tab, is where we can find our agent site hero images. So if you have custom images uploaded here that you want to carry over to your new site once you launch, you can simply hover your mouse over your image and then right click and select save image as. And this is going to allow you to save your hero images to your computer. So we do recommend being sure that you have a specific folder that you can find your website content in easily, or you can save your items to your computer desktop, whatever works best for you to be able to easily access your information once you are ready to launch your new website. So now that we have our hero images covered, we can move on to saving any custom content that you may have on your website. 
So we're going to go to the top and click on agent site pages. So the first thing we will go over is our school search page. So if you have a local school search page on your website, most likely this was set up by us. So if you do want to preserve that to add that to your new site, you can do so by going to the page. So we'll go all the way to the right and click on the three dots over here. And we're gonna click on edit. So once this loads, we want to go to the bottom right and click on this configure widgets button here. And then we are going to click on agent profile. So once that loads, you'll see there are multiple text boxes here. So the only thing that we need to save from this is the text in the agent bio box. This is going to be our widget code for our school search widget. So we can simply click at the start of this and highlight all of the text here. And once we highlight all the text in the bio box, we can simply hover over and right click and then copy. And then just like our landing pages, we're gonna go over to our Google doc and paste that in there. So you have a couple different options here. So you can either paste all of your content into one Google Doc, or you can create a separate Google Doc for each item that you're saving. Whatever works best for you as far as organization and being able to locate that later. So if you do want to create a separate document for each item, if you go to the top right and click on File, we can then go under New and create a new document right from here. So that's gonna open up a new document for us. So we can go to the top left and rename this. So this is going to be our school search widget. And then we can go into the body of our document and then right click and paste that widget code in here. This allows you to save this widget code for your school search to be able to use it on your new command site once you launch your new website. So now we'll go back over to command. So now that we have grabbed our widget code, we can go ahead and click on the back arrow up here in the top left. And it's going to ask if we want to save any changes. I'm gonna go ahead and select no. So now that we have captured our school search widget, we can jump into saving any custom content. So for our example here, we have our sold properties page. When saving custom content, we recommend doing this from the live website rather than the editing side like we did with the school search, as this will help save the formatting of our custom content. So to do this, we can simply click on the eyeball icon here for the page that we want to open up. So this is going to open up our sold properties page here. And then just like our other two, we just simply want to highlight all of the information on our custom page. And once we have highlighted the information that we want to save, we can again, right click and copy and be sure that you are clicking copy for all and not just copy image that way you are copying all the information highlighted and then we can either go back to our website content or if you are creating a separate document for each item we can again go up here to file and create a new document and then we can know that this is our sold properties page. And then again, we will just right click and paste our information in here. And that's going to paste our details over for us.
So now we can go back and close this window out here and go back over to our consumer tab here. So now that we have gone over how to preserve our landing pages and our custom content, let's go ahead and jump over and take a look at what the new command site looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up here. So once you launch your new command site, this is what your new consumer tab is going to look like. So you're going to see that we have a edit my website button in the center. We have our website domain here, our app URL here. Just like our previous consumer tab, we have our options for our mobile app as far as our killer mortgage information if you want to enable or disable those from your app. And then you still have the option to select your forced registration limits on your site. So I'm gonna go up to the top here and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the edit my website. And this is going to take us to the back end of our new website. So when you first launch your site and go into it, you might see this pop up here that will give you a little tour of the new website. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on explore on my own to get rid of this pop-up. However, if you ever click out of that and you need to bring it up again, you can always click on the tour button in the top right corner to go back to that information at any time. So I'm gonna go over how to add those save hero images to your website, along with some of the other options available on your new homepage. So to do this, I'm going to go under the edit your website section, and I'm going to click into the homepage option. So here is a preview of what our new homepage looks like. So we still have our hero images here and our title here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on section one on the left side here. And this is where we can add in our hero images. So to add a custom hero image, we can simply click on the add image link here. And then that's going to give us a empty box here. So if we click on this box, that's going to bring up our images that are already saved in our command that we can add or to upload those new images that you just saved from your previous site. You can click on the new image button here and that will allow you to upload images from your computer. So once you have your images uploaded, you can simply add them to your hero images by clicking on them and that's going to add our custom hero image there. Now, the size recommendation for the hero images is 1500 by 700 pixels. So do keep that in mind if you are looking to add custom images to this. And then we also have default images to fall back on. So what that means is if you were to delete all of your custom images, then it's going to automatically add these default images to your hero images. That way you are never left with a blank image here. So there will always be these defaults to fall back on if you decide that you want to remove your custom images. So if we minimize this first section here, I can show you a couple other features on the homepage here. So we still have our featured listings. However, they are a little more advanced now. So with the new featured listings here, you now have the option to select a center point location and then select the number of listings you would like displayed as well as the mile radius. So what that means is rather than having to manually add all your listings in, you can set your center location and your mile radius, and it's going to pull in however many listings you set your maximum to. 
within that radius. You also do have the option to still manually add listings. So if you want to use this dynamic option, but still showcase your personal listings, you can add those manually down here under featured listings by clicking this little plus symbol and entering the listing address. You can also search by MLS number as well, and that will pull your address up for you. If you do manually add listings here, that will allow these to show up first on the list here. So it will showcase your manually added listings and then it will move on to the dynamic listings. You can also add filters to these. So if we click on the filtered listings drop down here, we can set additional filters for the listings that we want shown on our featured listings site. So we have listing categories and you can select multiples at a time if you would like to. We have listing status. Keep in mind this will also be based on what your MLS allows. So not all MLS boards allow you to advertise coming soon or pending listings. So if you are not seeing those show up, it may be because your MLS board blocks those. You can set your property type and again, you can select multiples if you would like to. You can select limits on your number of bathrooms and bedrooms, as well as your home size and lot size. And you can also set price limits. So if you only want to show houses in a certain price range, you can set your price limits in there. And then you also have the option to add in keywords. So if you want to only show houses that have pools, you can add pool as a keyword. If you only want to show houses that have a garage, we can add a keyword for garage. And then we can add multiple by clicking the plus sign each time. And if you want to remove keywords at any time, you can simply click on this red dash here to remove those. Now, the next thing we have on our new homepage is featured testimonials. So on the legacy, legacy site, you may remember that your testimonials were on their own page and those had to be added manually. So we now have our testimonials listed on our homepage of our site. So we can now display up to 20 testimonials, whereas the legacy site did limit that to 12. So you do have the option to show more testimonials on your site if you would like to. You can sort those by publish date, or you can also sort them manually by clicking and dragging them once you have added them. So if you have captured testimonials on your new KW site, you can add those to your future testimonials by clicking the plus icon and then selecting the testimonial from the list here. If you are looking for testimonials that were captured on your legacy site, those are not going to pull over automatically. Those do need to be manually added in. So to get those added, you should be able to locate those under your consumer tab. So we will be able to locate those under our consumer tab and then under testimonials here. So if we click over to testimonials, this is going to show us all of the testimonials that we had captured on our legacy site. So in order to get these added to your new KW site, you will need to do so manually. So if we go in and highlight our testimonial text, and then right click and copy. We can then go back over to our new site here and we can click on the plus icon and select create new. This is going to bring us to a blank form to manually add our testimonial. So we're gonna grab that testimonial and copy it 
and then we're going to paste it into this testimonial text box here. You'll also see at the top your drop down to select your star rating. So be sure that you are selecting that. And then your client's first name and last name, which again, you can find over on your testimonials tab. So we have first name and last name listed here. And we also have the client sense information listed here. So we can grab the first name and last name from here. And you can either copy and paste it over or you can manually type it in, whatever works best for you. And then our client sent state. Now for the client sent state, it does require you to select a specific day. So if you don't have a specific day listed or you're not sure, then you can just kind of ballpark it as long as it matches the same year, it should be fine. So first we're gonna go ahead and set the year. So ours was captured in 2017. And then we'll just select any date from the list here. And then we can go ahead and select publish in the top right here. Once we publish it, it will give us the screen banner that it was published. So those are your required items in order to publish a testimonial manually. So you have to have your star rating, your testimonial text, client's first name and last name, and the client sense date. Those are your required items. Below that, you do see some additional information as far as location, and you also have a toggle for recommended. However, those are not required to submit. So those are optional if you don't want to fill all of that in. So now that we've got that added, we can click on the back button in the top left. And now we can go in here and add that new testimonial in. So all of those are going to show up under our future testimonials carousel here. The last thing that we have on our homepage is we now have a blog. So every newly launched KW site is being provided with this four part buyer's guide blog. And you also have the option to add additional blogs to your site as well if you would like to. So we can click on the blog list here and we will see all four parts of our home buyer's blog are listed here. If you ever want to hide any items from your homepage, so if you want to hide the blog or hide your future testimonials or future listings, each one of these options has the option to display or to hide. So we can choose to hide our blog if we would like to, and that's going to remove the blog from our homepage. Or if we want to show the blog but hide our testimonials, we can go under testimonials and set those to hide. So you can choose which items you would like to show or hide from your website page. Once you finish making any changes, always be sure that you are clicking the save button in the top right. Once we click that, it will let us know that it was saved with the screen banner here. And then you will also see all the way on the right side that we have this revisions list. So this keeps track of every change that is made within your page. So if you ever need to revert back to a previous version, if you made a mistake and you wanna refresh, restart, you can always go back to a previous version if you need to. So if we click on the three dots, we have the option to edit the revision, we can compare the revision. We can compare it to the live site. And you can also name your revisions if you want to name them and sort them. So this keeps track of all the changes that you are making within your website. So now that we have gone over adding our custom hero images and a brief overview of our homepage, 
I'm going to go ahead and show you what the new open house sign in page looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the KW logo here to get back to our dashboard. And then what we first want to do is go to the listing of the property that we want to create our open house sign-in page for. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our website link here. And that's going to open up our live website. So there's a couple different options here. So you can either search for the property here or if you have your listing added to your featured listings, you can simply go down to your featured listings and click on the property that you want to set up the open house sign-in sheet for. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on one of these listings here. So once we have our listing opened up, I'm gonna go ahead and go to our search bar at the top and I'm gonna click to the end of this URL here. So at the very end of our URL, what we want to do is type in forward slash and then open house, just like that. So no spaces or dashes or anything. And then we are going to hit enter. And that is going to refresh our page and give us our open house sign in sheet here. So if you are running an open house, you can set this up on whatever device you are using, whether it be a laptop or a tablet, however you set up your digital open house sign-in sheets. And you can have this open for the duration of your open house. So once your client comes in, they can fill in their information here. And it does require all of these to be filled in. So make sure they do fill in their name, their email, and their phone number in order to submit the form over. And then also be sure they are selecting the checkbox here. So this is stating that they do give permission to be contacted by phone, email, text message, whatever use of communication. And then once they hit submit, that's going to refresh the page with your agent profile information. And it also gives them a QR code to scan to bring up the property details. So if they scan this QR code with their device after they complete the sign-in sheet, this will then give them your MLS details for the listing, just as they would see it on your website. Once they have completed filling out the form, if you click on the back to sign in link in the top left, that's going to refresh your sign in sheet and then it is ready to capture the next client's information. So this is a completely revolving form. So you can just have this up for the entire duration and you don't need to worry about reloading the page or having to refresh it at all. Any information that is captured on these pages will automatically go into your command database as a new lead as well. So this captures all of their contact information for you. You can save these links by going up and copying the URL link here. If you want to advertise your open house sign and sheet with a QR code or anything like that, if you prefer to do that rather than having a device open the entire time. So you do have options for that as well. So the last thing that I will go over with you today before we end this off is going to be our resource pages. So I'm going to go back over to this tab here and I have a tab open to our website. So on our website, if you log into our site with your Market Center number, under the Agent Resources tab, we have a link for the new KW Agent websites. So this is going to be all resources based on the new KW sites. 
So the first thing that you're going to see at the top is going to be our live training calendar here. You can also add our live training calendar to your Google Calendar by clicking this Google Calendar link here in the bottom right. Below that, we have a direct link to our YouTube playlist that is based around the new KW sites. So any of our tip videos or trainings we have on the new sites can be located there. And we have also linked some of those tip videos here for easy access as well. So we have our first tip video on what to do before you launch your new KW site, as well as linked tip videos on preserving your content, kind of what we just went over today. And then below that, we have a section for what to do once you have launched your new site. So how to update your command website, how to add your testimonials, your featured listings, how to create that open house sign-in sheet. All of those are linked right here for easy access. And then we also have direct links to some of the KWRI provided articles. These are great help articles if you need something to walk you through anything related to the website. And I will drop links to these in the chat box for you as well, so you can grab these and save them. So first is going to be the link to our agent site resource page here. And then the next link I'm going to drop in is going to be for the KWRI articles. So this is what that page is going to look like. So there is a new team site available within the new sites. So if you are on a team and you are looking to have a team site, there are some articles at the top here that go over that. And then below that, we have all of our general articles on everything within the new KW sites here. So again, these are great resources. If you're diving into your new site and you get stuck on anything, you can always check for an article and you can also always reach out to us at any time as well if you get stuck on something and need assistance. So that about covers us for today. If you run into any trouble or you need help with anything at all or have any questions, you can always reach out to us anytime at support at scottleroymarketing.com. And we're always happy to help out wherever we can. Thank you all for jumping on today and joining. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week.